Welcome to this week's BrideAccess.com TV show. I'm Sarah Parker with Utah Central Credit Union. This week we have so many exciting wedding topics to discuss. We have photography tips, floral designs and ideas, and so much more. So sit back, relax, grab that one you love, and let's get started. You're watching BrideAccess.com. Sarah. I understand you've been married only about three years, but mm -hmm. when you proposed, I think I've heard that you showed up at Julie's work and sang her a little song. Yes, I did. Can we hear a part of it? Uh, yes, you can. <laughs> it's been three years since I sung it. No. Okay, it goes like this. The chorus is, well, I can walk on water. I can calm the raging sea. Move every mountain in my life. Cause I know that you're with me Turn water into wine Hold back the wind, turn back time As long as I know I'm with you I can do anything impossible <laughs> Well, who couldn't say yes to that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to pull out all the stops, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, thank you so much. That was amazing. Thank you. Hi, this is Russ Smith with Studio One Photography in Salt Lake City. We're here with Deborah at Chantilly Mansion in Layton, Utah. And we're going to give a tip of the day for BrianAccess.com. Today we're going to talk about how you should tell a story on your wedding day, rather than just take some portraits of your wedding. Deborah, you've seen a lot of brides get married here. How, I mean, how special are those photos uh, in, in those moments right before they get married in that bridal room, in that groom's room? You know, that's when you've got a lot of emotion going. Sure. Uh, a lot of feelings from everyone, mother, yeah. bridesmaids, you've got sisters in there. Probably uh, one of the most meaningful parts of that, of that time. And you want to capture that. Yeah. You want to have that um, definitely in your photo album to look few, back and remember. A few tears. Oh, plenty. Yeah. Plenty of those mascara running. But yeah, for sure. Definitely. Rather than just have a photographer come out after the ceremony or during the ceremony and take pictures after the ceremony, have the photographer come before the wedding, take pictures of the bride and the groom getting ready, hopefully at a beautiful place like Chantilly Mansion. 
This is Russ Smith with Studio One Photography for BrightAccess.com with Deborah at Chantilly Mansion. Want to improve your relationship? Think about a small habit your spouse has that irritates you. Got it? Okay. Now forget about it. For more tips, expert advice, and resources in your area that can help you learn how to work things out together, visit StrongerMarriage.org. Hi, it's Mary Crafts from Culinary Crafts, and a shout out to Broad Access for letting us come today and talk about action stations. What could be more fun for your wedding than an action station? Because we've all seen the buffet, you know what a formal plate of dinner looks like, but if you want something that's really fun for you and your guests, I suggest action stations. They can be done very affordably with just maybe one or two stations, or the whole yard can be filled with action stations and over the top. Um, I like the action station because it allows guests to really mingle, not just walk through a single buffet and be seated, but to get up and enjoy something, then be seated, to get up and find something else. Brides often say to me, how can I get my guests to stay? They're used to just this come and go kind of reception, and I want them to stay and party then you want to do action stations because people can enjoy this the whole night. They might have something like a pasta station over here, a Thai lettuce wrap over here, perhaps flaming crepes on this side. They can be very casual with barbecue beef. They can be very upscale with an Alaskan sable fish on a puree of parsnips and wilted spinach. So they can be very simple or they can be very elegant. Whatever your wedding didn't, um, needs for, to make it really shout out, it's about me and these are the foods I love. What better way to offer your guests a variety of things? I, you don't have to worry. Can I just choose chicken? Should I choose beef? Now you get to do both. So it's the best of both worlds. With the coming of the Food Network, people love to see chefs. They love to talk to chefs. And there sit the chefs at an action station in their full regalia with their chef coat, their chef hat, doing their thing, cooking and mixing and making the most fabulous fresh food so that you get to enjoy the freshest possible food. Guests love to walk up and have interactions with the chefs. So where did you go to school? What are you making there? What kind of balsamic vinegar is that? Do you use only extra virgin olive oil? They love the banter back and forth with the chefs. It's a great thing to do for your wedding. You'll see this idea and many other ideas on our website at www.culinarycrafts.com and be sure and visit our blog for that ongoing thing about what's hot in the wedding world. On our website, we show over 50 of our best weddings and a photo tour so you can peruse them and see what's hot for you. Welcome to BrideAccess.com. We are glad you're here. We are committed to helping you plan your wedding. From Utah's best wedding professionals, design tips, relationship advice, budget planner, and your very own wedding day weather forecast, you have it all right here at BrideAccess.com. Happy planning from all of us at BrideAccess.com. Hi, I'm Anne with Anne Elizabeth Custom Design and Printing. I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about pocket invitations and appropriate situations to use them and not to use them. And if you are going to use them, how you should situate the pieces in the pocket so that it makes sense and that no one is missing a piece when they receive the invitation. So let me show you what I mean. So pocket invitations obviously are invitations that when closed feature some kind of a tag or an introductory piece on the front and when open feature a pocket. Now there's lots of different sizes and shapes of pocket invitations but the idea is that the pocket is there to help you organize and structure your pieces and along the way you can introduce a lot of really fun design elements but the, really the main point is organization. So this is usually used for a wedding that has a lot of different pieces of the puzzle going on. Maybe there's a rehearsal dinner, maybe there's a ceremony and a luncheon and a ring ceremony and then the reception following that. A lot of different pieces have to fall into place to keep everything organized. So on this particular invitation, this bride has chosen to do a really fun and important organization here. So let me show you how this works. So 
This main portion works as an announcement. There is no information on this section that is inviting people to attend an actual reception. So for some of this bride's guest list, they received this portion plus a fun photo of the bride and groom in the pocket. And this went out to a good portion of the guests just like this. Now, a smaller section of guests were invited to a reception and open house. Those guests also received this card. So, a portion of the invitations went out looking like this. Looks like a complete set still. And another group of guests, the smallest group of guests, were invited to the reception, excuse me, the ceremony itself, and they received the ceremony card. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward, right? But there's some rhyme and reason behind this that really makes sense. It wouldn't have made sense for them to position the ceremony card in the middle. The smallest group of guests got that, and if you receive this and, there were, and it looked like this, it's pretty obvious that a card was excluded for you and that you weren't invited to some portion of the event. So positioning of those cards is really important. One more example here of flip-flopping the ceremony. This is a great usage of putting the ceremony, which is usually the smallest group of guests, at the top instead of the bottom. So here, you've got a set where you can remove the ceremony card and you still have three staggered heights that look great together. Now, I do recommend that pockets are a wonderful organizational tool, but I think that there are some situations where you don't need a pocket. For instance, if all you're sending to the majority of guests is maybe a photograph, and you're really just purchasing the pocket for the small group of guests that are coming to more events, consider the style like I showed you that where you can segregate only some invitations that have a pocket. Now also you can consider lots of great styles that still have folds, it can still be very visually interesting without going to the expense of a pocket, especially when the pocket really is overkill for what you're doing. So a pocket is great for organization, it also is very pretty and I understand that lots of brides want to do a pocket, but really consider the benefit of what you're getting from the pocket if your wedding really will only incorporate one enclosure card to most guests. I'm Ann with Ann Elizabeth Custom Design and Printing. You can find us on our website, annelizabeth.com, and of course on Bride Access. Welcome back to Creating Connections. I'm here in New Orleans at an international filmmakers convention called In Focus. Event filmmakers come from all over the world to learn about not only shooting and editing tips, but the latest marketing strategies. During my presentation, I shared another tip on how to stand out from the crowd. If you really want to be noticed by potential clients, it's important that you know your unique talents. Jay Niblick from whatsyourgenius.com put together a seven-year study with 197,000 people in over 23 countries to identify why the best of the best were successful. They found that those who are at the top of the charts have two things in common. First, they know themselves. They know their talents. They know their weakness. They know what environment is and is not most conducive for their success. It's as if they have an owner's manual for everything that they bring to the table. And second, they are authentic to those findings. In other words, they know their talents and they incorporate that in their business. Well, the good news is that you can do this in about 20 minutes. Go online and Google Tony Robbins Disc Profile. This is a free test that is amazingly accurate and will help you identify your unique talents and gifts that you can then incorporate into your business. This will help you stand out from the crowd. I'm David Perry. This is Creating Connections here at brightaccess.com. <gasps> I think wedding planning is much more fun. We'll be right back. Looking for the perfect wedding gift for the new bride and groom? Look no further than the I Do Cookbook. Discover the romance of home-cooked, delicious, affordable meals in the comfort of your own kitchen. Help that new bride and groom get off to a great start. Order the I Do Cookbook today. 
Congratulations from all of us at brightaccess.com and Utah Central Credit Union on your recent engagement. Now is the time that you are diving into wedding planning and there's nothing better to help you than this pink binder. It is the best when it comes to organization for your wedding. You can remove this picture and actually insert your wedding invitation, your engagement pictures, or just a special picture of you and your loved one. And then you can stay organized with the tabs inside. You can put your contracts, the business cards, everything you need to help categorize and make sure every detail of your wedding is taken care of. Also inside your wedding binder, you will find a card to Utah Central Credit Union. Bring this in and open your visa and you will receive a 2.9% and you will get $50 put into your new joint checking account. Just a little something from all of us at Utah Central Credit Union. Brides, this binder will keep you completely organized and sane for that matter. It can be picked up at any Utah Central Credit Union branch at several of the brideaccess.com partners and requested on brideaccess.com. At brightaccess.com, we celebrate the love two people share that brings them together. Here is a recent story that touched all of us, and we wanted to share it with you. In this image, you see Katie Kirkpatrick. She's 21 years old. Next to her is her fiance, Nick. Nick is 23. This picture was taken just prior to their wedding. Katie has terminal cancer and spends hours in chemotherapy. Here you see Nick waiting while she finishes one of her sessions. Even in pain and dealing with her organs shutting down, with the help of morphine, Katie took care of every single part of the wedding planning. Her dress had to be altered many times due to Katie's constant weight loss. It's not a typical guest you see in this image, her oxygen tank. Katie had to use it during the ceremony and reception. The other couple in this picture is Nick's parents. Very emotional with the wedding and to see their son marrying the girl he fell in love with when he was just an adolescent. In this picture we see Katie listening to her husband and friends while in a wheelchair. They're singing to her at her reception. In the middle of the party, Katie had to rest for a bit and catch her breath. The pain does not allow her to stand for long periods of time. Sadly, Katie died five days after her wedding. To see a beautiful, fragile woman dress as bride with a beautiful smile makes you think. Happiness is always there within reach, no matter how long it lasts. Let's enjoy life and don't live a complicated life. Life is too short. Work as if it was your first day. Forgive as soon as possible. Love without boundaries. Laugh without control. And never stop smiling. Please pray for those suffering from cancer or any difficult challenge. Whether the two of you are together for only five days or for an entire lifetime, your love will have no end. Hello, I'm Michael Nelson with RememberWhenFilms.com. For 30 years I've been filming weddings and my expert tip today is how to be more beautiful on your wedding day. Start by picking a dress that makes you look beautiful. Remember, when you look at the celebrities in their magazines, they're marketing themselves for their next job. They pick a dress that makes them look beautiful and then they create a style by doing that and others follow making it a trend. You should do the same thing. Show off what you have to show off and cover up what you should cover up. An example would be your neckline. If you have a long skinny neck with thin shoulders, expose them. Go backless or strapless. Uh, pull your hair up exposing your neck and maybe no veil. And perhaps a long pair of earrings that draw attention to the neckline. If your neck is a little uh, shorter or wider uh, and your shoulders uh, slope 
or are wider, uh, you know, cover them up. Go with some sleeves or at least some uh, straps. Have a veil that hangs down behind. Let your hair down. And your earring should be small, not drawing attention to your neckline. And then put a, a necklace or a choker that breaks the neckline up. Those are things that all uh, will really help. When you get the perfect dress, then let us make a beautiful movie of you. The bridal videos are one of the most popular things nationwide and especially here in Utah. It's wonderful for you, a lot of fun, uh, the grooms love them, and it usually makes mom and dad cry. We bring out your personality and your hobbies and loves and talents and really make a beautiful video of you. Some brides like a beautiful location like a park or a garden or perhaps in the snow. Perhaps something like the Great Salt Lake or the Bonneville Salt Flats or the Red Rocks of Southern Utah and Lake Powell. Others like to shock their audience with something incredible like a downtown location in the city or a graffiti building or perhaps a cemetery. We specialize in helping you have fun in front of the camera and making a beautiful bridal video of you that shows off everything you have to show off. You can get other great ideas at our website at rememberwhenfilms.com and you can check out the other beauty tips as well. Welcome Bright Access. Here we are outside of a Zumba class, one of the hottest fitness crazes. Come with me and let's go see what it's all about. with the flower patch and today we're here with Rochelle and we're gonna have a wedding consultation. Now brides, as you go through and you pick out all of your stuff and you're ready to sit down and have a consultation and talk about the different things that you want and ready to place your order, there's a few things you need to do. First of all, call and make an appointment. At that appointment, you'll be asked your wedding date, your colors, and maybe a little bit about your favorite flower or if there's a flower that you've chosen. That way we'll be able to have those items ready when you come to your consultation. Now, plan for at least a half an hour and that's if you're a quick bride. You should plan probably for an hour and maybe even an hour and a half. The other thing is, bring with you only those people who you trust and you value their opinion who will be able to help you make these decisions and be able to make it less overwhelming for you. So Rochelle, we're ready for your consultation. I see that you've brought your picture collage. This will help us in deciding on what your style might be and maybe the look of what you want your bouquet to be. I see here you've picked a round bouquet that's handheld with a mixture of flowers. That's great. Now, when you come to your consultation, you'll need to have all your numbers figured out. How many bridesmaids are you going to have and groomsmen? And will it be corsages for your brothers and your sisters or just your parents and your grandparents? Maybe a special aunt or someone else who is special to you should be recognized also. Those are all things to think about before you come to your consultation. Does your venue have any limitations? Maybe you can't have fresh rose petals. They don't want to stain the floor. Maybe no open flame. But those are all things to take into consideration when we talk about your flowers and the different things that you want to have at your wedding. The other thing is the budget. You should always have your budget ready. Whatever that budget may be, we can help you squeeze the very most out of every last dollar that you have. But remember, try to be flexible. You always want to get what you really, really want. Don't leave your flowers to the end. They may be one of the last things that you order, but they will bring you the biggest return, the most impact, and they'll be things that people will remember for a long time. So Rochelle, let's get to planning. With a good consultation and some great planning, you'll be able to sit back, relax, and leave the details to us. I'm Amy with The Flower Patch, and you're watching brightaccess.com.
planning a wedding can be a mental challenge. Don't let all of the to-dos push you over the edge. Everything you need is just a mouse click away at Utah's BrideAccess.com. <laughs> Groom not included. I'm Alex Davis from The Bride Shop here in downtown Salt Lake City, Utah. And for you brides who are going to be getting married in the temple, there are a few guidelines that you do need to follow, and we're going to go over that right now. So, you have a couple options, first of all. You can either, if you're planning on wearing your gown in the temple, you need to make sure that you don't have a lot of beading. My bride Elise here, you can see the gown that she's wearing. It's very interesting and it's very intricate because she has all of the different ruching going through the gown, but there is no beading on there. If there is beading, it needs to be clear. It can't have any silver or any color in it. Also, what you need to make sure of is that the neckline is high enough and that it goes in far enough, and also that we have a long enough sleeve. This is the most important gown that you will ever wear, and you do need to have a little bit of personality with it. So one thing that you can do as you're coming out of the temple, you might as well add a little bit of color. One thing that is really in style are these colored belts. And I'm gonna put this on Elise so you can see how it can make the gown even more fashion forward and give it a little bit more personality. And this way, she can wear her gown inside the temple, but she can also wear it outside and have a little bit more fun with it and show off her personality. So thank you, Bride Access, for coming and visiting us here at the Bride Shop in Salt Lake City, Utah. And just remember, brides, when you are getting married in the temple, the few pointers that you need to know, white, not very much beading, making sure you're completely covered, and remember to have fun with your dress to bring in a little bit of your personality after you get married in the temple. And again, come visit us here at the Bride Shop. We're really excited to work with you. In our efforts to help you plan your wedding and take out some of the stress, BrideAccess.com has a new wedding blog, and it's just for you. Get detailed information from the top wedding professionals in the industry, plus tips from our own BrideAccess.com experts. Happy planning from BrideAccess.com, where you can find everything you need to plan a wedding, <laughs> grooms not included. Well, here we're here at the end of the episode again, and thank you so much for all the wonderful, talented professionals who gave their advice and tips and wonderful words of wisdom. And if you need more information, be sure to visit us on BrideAccess.com or our blog or our BrideAccess.com Facebook page. And remember, we have everything you need to plan your wedding. Except the groom. You have to find that on your own. BrightAccess.com would like to thank our contributors, Culinary Crafts, The Flower Patch, Remember When Film, Studio One Photography, Castle Bridge Films, Anne Elizabeth Invitations, and David Perry Films. The hosts of BrightAccess.com are Alex Boyer and Sarah Parker. BrightAccess.com is brought to you by Utah Central Credit Union. We're in it together.